We have introduced the double entry bookkeeping system in the previous lesson. Now, we're gonna talk about the specifics of it, and by the end of the video, you will help me create your very first journal entry. This video is actually first part of a mini-series about the double entry bookkeeping system. But before we go through all of that, I would like to welcome you all again to Accounting Zero to Hero. We are here to help you understand the fundamental accounting concepts through simplified technical discussions and practical applications of the accounting standards. All of this to help you go from zero to hero. Now, let's go back to the video. The double entry bookkeeping system is the accounting system that every single company uses to maintain their accounting books. We actually have a single entry bookkeeping system But I know that it is only applicable for very small and simple businesses, sometimes even just for personal bookkeeping. We will not cover this for now. So for the double entry bookkeeping system, it's kind of interesting for me because this system has been present ever since it was published by Father Luca Pacioli and has seen just some slight modifications. So you see, it works so well that no one is actually attempting to change it. So under the double entry bookkeeping system, every time an economic event happens, there are always two items affected within the accounting equation. It doesn't mean that both sides should be affected, side one and side two, resources and the claims. It doesn't mean that both of these are always affected, but it can be that only one side is affected in one single transaction. For example, if we collect a receivable in cash, it means that we increase our cash and we decrease our receivable at the same time, which are both under assets with no effect on liabilities and equity our accounting equation still holds true. So the challenge in the double entry bookkeeping system, or at least one of the challenges, is to identify what are the two items that's going to be affected whenever there is a transaction. Mastering the double entry bookkeeping system is the first step to really becoming a very skilled accountant. So what do I need to know about this? So in the context of the system, you need to know two things first. Number one, what is a transaction? And number two, what is a journal entry? Let's talk about the first one. What is a transaction? A transaction is the economic event that may or may not trigger an accounting entry. Transaction analysis is one of the most exciting parts of being an accountant because transactions range from the simplest to the most complicated ones, to the point that sometimes you will need an expert opinion in order for you to finalize your conclusions on the economic effects of some transactions, because some transactions are not really very simple. So for today, we will focus on the most common transactions a business will encounter and imposing it on the accounting equation as a form of practice, just like what we did in the first video. Our task is to imagine how it will affect our accounting equation and to make sure that the equation of assets is equal to liabilities plus equity is always balanced. And now I'm putting emphasis that not all transactions can have an economic effect. So in this slide, you will see five transactions of fictional company A. These are transactions because these are economic events that may or may not trigger an accounting entry. The first one is when the owner of the business invests 10,000 to start company A. The second one, customer C buys a product from company A for $50 and pays in cash. The third one, customer D promises to buy a product from company A. Four, 
Company A borrows $15,000 from Bank B. And five, last, Company A buys office supplies for $100 and pays 50% in cash. Since we did not yet discuss how to create a journal entry from the transactions, our task now is just to identify the effects of the, tra of the transactions on the accounting equation. This is an exercise on transaction analysis. So for the first one, the owner of the business invests 10000 to start company A. We know that it affects assets because we received cash of 10000 And then since we did not borrow the money from the bank, the liabilities becomes is zero. And then we increase our equity by the same amount of 10000 because this is money coming from the owner of the business. For the second one, customer C buys a product from company A for $50 and pays in cash. Since we, we received cash again, we have a $50 increase in the asset side. Assuming that this is an income, meaning it is earned during the current year, our liabilities will still not increase, but our equity will increase by $50. Because, as we have discussed in the equity video, income could be resources coming from the pockets of the customers, which increases our equity. The third one, Customer D promises to buy a product from Company A. So since this is still a promise, it has no effect on the accounting equation. So this is an example of uh, when a transaction does not have a does not have an economic effect to trigger an entry. This can have a future effect when customer D finally buys the product, but as long as it as it becomes a promise and even no contract has been executed, it will never have an effect on the accounting equation. The fourth one, Company A borrows $15,000 from Bank B. So since it is cash again, we increase our cash by $15,000. And since it is from Bank B, a creditor, we increase our liabilities by $15,000 with no effect on equity because this is money coming from a creditor and not from the owner. So the fifth one, the company A buys office supplies for $100 and pays 50% in cash. So it's a bit tricky because there are three things that will be affected here. Number one, your office supplies increased by the full amount of $100 because by purchasing it, you received the full amount of supplies. But then you only paid 50% in cash. So it decreases by 50. The net effect in your cash is an increase of 50 here, 100 minus 50. So since you did not pay for $50 from the purchase of the supplies, your liabilities increased by 50. So your accounting equation is still true because it's an increase in 50 in the asset side and it's an increase in 50 in the claims side with no effect on equity. So this is an example of transaction analysis. The next thing that you need to know about the double entry bookkeeping system is what is a journal entry? A journal entry is the quantitative interpretation of an economic event in a format that can be utilized or interpreted in the accounting system. A journal entry will look different depending if the company is using manual records for small businesses or through an accounting system, but it will always have its basic parts. In the accounting process that we have discussed before, when I said that data is aggregated, what I really mean is that all of the journal entries during the year 
are aggregated or added up from beginning of the period to the end of the period in order for it to be summarized into a financial report. So what we are aggregating mainly actually are journal entries. What you are seeing now is the basic skeleton of a journal entry. These are the parts of the journal entry that we have. Number one is the date. It's always important to put the date because you will be going back to it in the future and you have to remember what is the effective date of the entry. Two, the particulars. This refer to the different accounts that are affected by your entry. And the accounts are the more specific items inside the element. For example, under assets, you can have accounts of cash, receivables, and the like. Liabilities, you can have trade payables or bank loans. For equity, you can have retained earnings or other types of capital accounts. So these are the accounts that we are going to use. We do not use the specific element. We do not put here asset or liability because it's too broad. The next part are the quantitative effects. The debits and the credits and we will discuss them shortly so this pertain to the specific amounts that you want to affect on the specific accounts that you identified in section 2. the last part are the descriptions it's important to put in a description because when you go back to the entry after five months you it helps to have a description to remember what the entry is all about for now, I would like you to know first that how all of the transactions with quantifiable economic effects can always, and I mean always, be transformed into a journal entry. So right now, we're going to talk about the third part, debits and credits. To avoid overwhelming you, I would just like to say that debits actually just mean left and credits mean right. In accounting, they do not have uh, deeper meanings. However, for me, the heart of debits and credits is actually on how they increase or decrease a balance. It's part of a transaction analysis perspective. Because whenever you put an amount in the debit side or in the credit side, it's actually a mini instruction to the system or to the accountant saying that if it's in the debit, I want to increase or decrease this account depending on the nature of the account the nature which we will be discussing shortly so in order to analyze the nature of the account whether the debits increase or decrease a specific account you have to remember a basic rule in account in the accounting equation so assets as you can see are on the left side and the claims are on the right side and left, you know, that means debit, and right means credit. So in order for me to remember this one, all of the items in the left side increases through debit, which means that all assets increase through debit, and liabilities in equity increase through credit. And the inverse is true as well. Asset side decreases through credit. And liability side decreases through debit. This is actually a very simple rule that I, would, I, I want you to remember and memorize. So in memorizing the nature of debits and credits, you have to remember that debit is not always good and credit is not always bad why because for example an increase in equity is generally good but 
an increase in equity is done through a credit. As a very simple application here, if we are saying if we are saying that an asset here, for example, cash, we're saying that we want to credit it for fifty dollars. We are saying it as a mini instruction that we want to decrease cash by fifty dollars. Now let's take a look at more examples by looking into our previous list of transactions and applying the analysis that we presented in the previous slide. So in order to determine the journal entry of a particular transaction, I always follow uh, some, some steps. Number one, identify the two accounts affected. Number two, determine the quantitative impact. Number three, identify the debits or credits, which accounts are debited, which accounts are credited. Number four, describe. So right now, we will just do the first one. And then I will leave the rest of the four to you as an exercise, but I will be putting in the answers in the description below. So step one, we find the two accounts that are affected. So we know that in the previous example, we have here cash and capital that are affected by the first transaction. Liability has a zero impact. The, the quantitative effect is that cash increased by $10,000 because of the investment and capital increased by $10,000 because it's money coming in from the pocket of the owner. Determine wh what is a debit and what is the credit in the transaction. We know that cash is an asset. And from the previous analysis, we know that assets increase through a debit. So when we do a journal entry, we put in a cash, which increases through debit. And we know that the cash increased. So our cash has a debit of 10,000. Our capital then increased by 10,000. And we know that since this is in the right side, it increases through the credit. capital A. So last one is to describe the transaction. Initial investment of owner. So this part right here is your very first journal entry. So when you're doing the rest of the assignment for you, please remember the steps that you need to go through in order for you to create your very own journal entries from the last four transactions. In the next installments of this series, we will have a deeper discussion on the debits and credits of the income statement accounts and a closer look on specific accounts under each element. And that's it for the video. As a recap, when you do practice double entry bookkeeping, it means that you need to practice transaction analysis and journal entry preparations. And if you have any more questions about the topic covered in this video, please feel free to comment down below and I will do my best to respond to you as soon as I can. And if you want to be updated on any future topics, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. See you!